every year. Nearly 75,000 wildfires burn all across the United States, endangering people, homes, and infrastructure. So for Mauser's final project of 2016, we're designing a fleet of connected drones that'll help keep these communities safe during future blazes. It's called Project First Responders, and it's sponsored by Intel and TE Connectivity. Now, in our last episode, we brought in drone expert Ivan Stamatovsky to tell us about his Global Arc system. The idea is that this system would allow us to link a fire department drone and a police department drone so that they could work together autonomously. So let's talk about how these drones are deployed. Where do they live? We built these launch pads that are independent. They live outside. They just open up. The drone goes out and it executes its mission. And then on the way back, it has some precision landing mechanisms that will put it exactly onto the spot where it needs to be charged. How many of these would you have around a community? We can have one of these every 10 miles. You open up our portal and you select the drones on the map that you see are closest to the fire. You launch them and they will go and make a map of the fire and just be at your disposal. What kinds of sensors are we looking at? So for fire departments, what's most important is to have a thermal imager on the drone. They want to see through thick smoke. With thermal, they can map out the fire in combination with the wind sensor on the drone. You can kind of guess where the fire is going to be. Which would be super valuable. Police, on the other hand, they want to see details. So they're using high definition zoom cameras. This is custom built. It is a thermal and RGB camera combination. And the neat thing about it is that it's actually lighter than your average GoPro camera. Oh, fantastic. Because <laughs> weight has got to be a huge issue. Absolutely. The lower the weight, the longer the flight time. I can see that the camera case is actually 3D printed. This is a high-end 3D print built specifically for this setup. So what were some of the biggest challenges with this build? The problem that we had was how do you get these drones connected to cell towers? How do you maintain quality of signal and low latency? And this is where we ended up uh, talking to TE engineers and they recommended this particular antenna that actually work around the world and cover every single spectrum of the cell network. There was a lot of trial and error here all these different components needed to talk to each other and work together. We have TE sensors for altitude, temperature, and positioning. We have Bluetooth, video transmission, power regulation, autopilot, all built into this box. And this is all made modular so that it can actually fit on this super light frame that is built out of arms, all carbon fiber for low weight, and you'll notice that there's zero wires taken on the outside. Oh, that's what these are. Okay, so these are connectors for your speed control and you run it through the frame. Very clever. Well, the drone looks great. All the hardware seems like it's pretty much done. How's the software? The biggest issue here is security. We are still working on assigning different levels of access. The appropriate department sees the appropriate information that's relevant to them, and then they can make more informed decisions. Exactly, and we need to make sure we know who is in control of drones. Right, you don't want some hacker taking a hold of your drone network. Exactly right. Cool. Tune in next time when we'll have an actual first responder so we can see how this new drone technology might serve as a first line of defense.